Okay, uh, the previous video, I restarted a like a reiteration of uh, a string of videos that I did before, and I've taken them off for now because I thought perhaps I'm a bit biased here and there with it. Mainstream sort of physics and viewpoints on geometry and dimensions and, uh, and all the things involved don't seem to have entirely the same viewpoint or perhaps it might be a bit of a mix uh, some theoretical physicists out there have this kind of viewpoint some are a bit far out on the beating edge a bit uh, using fancy terms that are a bit woo that there's no nothing to back them up others not so much but is this core thing that a lot of them have been talking about, talking about, I want to present as well, because I think it makes a lot of sense, although I could be wrong. So on the dimensions, the, the thing, the previous video, I talked about the, the dot, then the line, then the square, which makes uh, the cube, you know, put six planes of the squares together, it makes the cube have a look at that and uh, you know you perhaps hopefully learn from it why I think it's wrong and I think there's a thing here that can relate to infinity as well uh, let's say all that does exist is the dots and you can always divide you know, the CERN of always collided particles together, uh, smashing them and find out what things are made of, smaller and smaller. And I've said, well, you can always divide because there's always something there to divide. Uh, at some point, a division might be beyond the ability for the equipment to measure. So it would seem like you, you've finally come to the final particle, but, you know, at one time, they thought the atom was the final thing, but then they'd discover like uh, there's electrons, positrons, a nucleus, and so on with the atom. Right. So everything is made. Everything is made. Always seems to be made out of something even smaller. Um, so what is the smallest equilateral geometry possible? Though well, that is this animated thing here. Uh, a, a tetrahedron. I'll show you why that's important now in a bit. Think of the tetrahedron as the geometry of inward collapse, inward pressure, eliminating maximum amount of sides of an object but still maintaining symmetry. Because I think there is a lot of, a lot of Theoretical physicists, uh, some of them have talked about an extreme amount of order in the universe, even though there is, they do agree that there's entropy. And others have talked about an extreme amount of disorder. Um, somehow getting order from chaos, I don't agree with that. You get out what you put in. Um, spherical objects are formed from expansive geometry that's expanding out into the universe. A sphere can be thought of as perhaps one side, or if you divide it a little bit, but still maintaining something that's spherical, we can put pinpoint the like triangles on this. And you see this in 3D modeling. Triangles have a very stable shape you know they're the ideal for forming geometries out of the smaller triangles and the smaller the triangles you got the more detail you, you are able to put in with 3d modeling so this is what something like this 
But let's say we divide it again and again and again with the surface to get more of a rounded surface. The more you divide, the more triangles, more detail. So for argument's sake, we just say spherical has maximum size or maybe even infinite sides. Which is a result of the expansion. If every every action has an equal and opposite reaction, then while there is expansion, there's going to be contraction at the same time. A reaction has an equal force, but opposite opposite direction reaction at the same time. For instance, when you breathe out. You're expanding the gas outward, out of your body. At the same force of that happening, at the same time your lungs are contracting inward to push out the gas, right? So the inward would be the total opposite, the least amount of sides while still maintaining equal actual geometry. Uh, symmetry, if you if you want, then uh, if you like, uh, symmetrical uh, is another way to look at it. Every side of a tetrahedron is equal to all the other sides. It's a four-sided uh, object. And in the next video, you're going to see other things that can build on this we live in a universe of polars you know polarization positives negatives black white uh, uh, north and south so there would be two tetrahedrons at the final sort of inward collapse geometry and we'll talk more about that geometry and where there's evidence of that geometry occurring or side effects on cloud masses you know, on certain planets uh, occurring because of the inward pressure of things pushing towards that kind of geometry as well. Um, so this is part two. Very short. I keep it at that. I'll see you in the next part. Cheers. Bye. Uh, Thank you for watching and I'll look forward to doing another video soon. Bye.